The big headline from New Delhi comes from the British High Commission. It has lost extra security. Looks like India has had enough with the UK's tolerance of Khalistanis attacking Indians and its missions abroad. It could very well be a tale of two cities. Today in New Delhi, India removed all external security outside the British High Commission. Security was also reduced at the High Commissioner's residence. Cement barricades mm -hmm. placed outside the UK mission and the envoy's house were removed. But if you're getting worried, fret not. India has not gone rogue. Security personnel are still posted outside the High Commission to safeguard both the mission and the British envoy, Alexander Ellis. It's something which Britain failed to do just a few days back, which brings us to the other city in the story, London. Let me refresh your memory first. On Monday, we told you about how Khalistani radicals attacked the Indian High Commission in London. Take a look at these images. Not only did the pro-Khalistani mob protest outside the London mission, they entered it and then pulled down the tricolor. It was an Indian staff member who intervened. He rescued our flag from the mob. And where was the British police? They failed to safeguard the mission. India lodged a strong protest with the Rishi Sunak government, which is sad that it's happening on the watch of an Indian origin British Prime Minister. We've always said there's no point cheering an Indian leader in a third country. Now imagine if the UK's mission in India was stormed in a similar fashion. Imagine the hue and cry that would have followed. The hypocrisy is staggering. Look at Britain's response to this incident. Its Foreign Office Minister Tariq Ahmed said, and I'm quoting, the UK government will always take the security of the Indian High Commission seriously. Well, the statement is nothing but diplomatic platitude, and India is not having it. So today's action of reducing extra security outside the British High Commission could be seen as a tit-for-tat move. You see, it's the basic duty of the host nation to protect the foreign missions on its soil. And what exactly are these security measures? The Indian Ministry of External Affairs' protocol handbook lays out the following. One, Government of India will implement all appropriate measures to protect the premises of foreign representations. Two, appropriate precautionary measures will be taken in the likelihood of threat to their peace. And three, foreign representations are prohibited from taking unilateral security measures outside premises. Meaning, the barricades placed outside the UK mission were put there by the government of India. And this additional security measure can be seen as a courtesy extended by the Modi government. They don't have to do it. It's a courtesy. And they don't have to do it, especially when the same is not afforded to the Indian mission in the UK. This is not an isolated incident. In December 2013, barricades outside the US Embassy in New Delhi were removed. This was following the Devyani Kobragade incident. She was an Indian diplomat, a deputy consul general in New York. She was strip searched in the US. Why? They charged her with lying in her visa application about her domestic help. Kobragade was arrested and treated like a common criminal. As diplomatic ties became tense, India removed the security barricades outside the U.S. mission in Delhi. Washington got the message. It tried to make amends. So you see, playing with security is a very dangerous game. And two can play it. In diplomacy, goodwill goes a long way. But it's a two-way street. So it's high time the U.K. shared its hypocrisy. If it expects India to go above and beyond to protect its missions, it must return the favor and not mouth platitudes while Khalistani vandals attack India.